In this video, I'm gonna make a floating shelf that's like no other shelf you've ever seen. We're gonna hand carve a mold out of foam to look like a rocky shelf structure, and then spray concrete with a glass fiber reinforced backer to get a super lightweight shelf that we can float on a wall. It's only gonna weigh about 45 pounds. Let's get into it. Floating against a wall like that, it's a shelf. That should be really freaking crazy. So we're gluing together all these pieces of foam to make a big block we're gonna carve the mold for the rocky shelf from. And previously I've been using this spray adhesive that's designed for foam, doesn't melt it. My buddy Blake over at BM Sculpture uses just great stuff, insulation foam, to spray between the sheets. I thought it would be an issue because it expands, but uh, it seems like it works for him. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna give that a go. When I've made these stack foam blocks before, I've had issues with the middle of the pieces bending and there being gaps between the pieces of foam. So this time I put OSB on either side to get even clamping pressure and hopefully this will result in a more even solid foam block. Love the one-handed bar clamps when you're working alone. I know I say that over and over, but get yourself some. It doesn't look like there's huge gaps. So now we need a, uh, a reference edge that's straight. And so what we're gonna do, we got a board here. There's a jig and we're gonna clean up this side. Ooh. All right, so that's worked pretty well. Okay, cool. Next it's time to carve the rocky shape. And this time I wanna try freehand carving instead of using my CNC. This is one of those things you're like so nervous because I'm not an artist. I have no idea what I'm doing, so I'm just sketching. So there may be like eight versions of this drawn at the end of the day. So just visually, so y'all can understand what we're trying kind of thinking of here. So like this, so this is the top, and then this is kind of the back. We're gonna carve all this chunk out use this Japanese knife and start like kind of like hogging out chunks as much as I can. Or I could use a chainsaw like some of my cooler friends on YouTube, but oh, maybe I should just use a chainsaw. Seems like unnecessary safety risk. Many, many minutes later. We're just gonna bite the bullet, put on the full face mask and bust out the carbon disc on the angle grinder. Just go for it. Let it rip. Woo. All right, let's get messy. I started by using a cut saw disc to rough out the larger shape and then came back with a ball carving tool to get the grooves and undulations that would make it look more rock-like. The ball tool leaves a lot of little gouges though that probably wouldn't look that realistic. So then I just used sandy blocks and sandpaper to come back and smooth everything over into shapes that looked more rock-like or boulder-like to my eye. And this was my first time ever really carving stuff like this by hand and it was a ton of fun and surprisingly I think looks like a real boulder. There's parts where the foam kind of ripped out. We basically want to use some joint compound to get it all filled in so that it looks natural. I want this to look like a big boulder that was kind of like left in the river and smoothed over. Start finessing it. The bulk of material came off real quick. Then now this is the, uh, the tedious work. So like rubbing in joint compound into those gaps. After the joint compound had cured, it was time to coat the whole form in epoxy. And the epoxy is gonna help further smooth everything over and make it easier to remove the concrete from the form since concrete would probably stick to joint compound, which is another cementitious product. I did one really thin layer of epoxy, then sanded it down to smooth everything out again, and then came back and did a final flood coat with some tabletop epoxy to get everything ready for the concrete pour. Now, I previously thought that it was dangerous to put epoxy on the foam because it could melt the foam if it went exothermic, but I did some tests on it before I dumped it on this form and it didn't melt any foam. And that made things a little easier since I didn't have to coat the entire form with joint compound before applying epoxy. Because I would have taken like three coats of joint compound and here I only needed one. Ow. 
Ow. Yeah, I might lose a toenail. Oh, really? It's not... I thought that might have been traumatic for the video. No. No, really? Yeah. Yeah, no, it hurts. What I learned here was that I definitely should have been wearing my area at work work boots while I was doing this project and cutting things down, even for the smaller piece, which I didn't think was that much of a safety hazard for my toes. With the melamine cut and the epoxy fully cured, it was time to assemble the form. I'm just relying on caulk to hold the melamine to the foam, so I thought it would be a good time to bring back a classic segment on Medustrial Maker. Some of you old school folks might remember. That's right, it is time for another episode of Caulk Talk, which is the same as every episode of Caulk Talk. I apply a layer of paste to the melamine, lay down a generous layer of 100% silicone caulk, run a metal fund and bolt tool over all the caulk lines. Metal fund and bolt tool pushes excess caulk to the sides, leaves a clean line over the seam, and the layer of paste makes it easy to peel the excess caulk away once it cures, leaving a perfect caulk line. And that's it for this episode of Caulk Talk. Let's take a minute to hear from this video's amazing sponsor, Policy Genius. Policy Genius is your one stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need at the right price. If you have a family, you know how much your loved ones depend on you, and in a worst case scenario, you would not want them to have to worry about money. Even if you have life insurance through your workplace, it might not be enough for your coverage needs, and it won't follow you if you leave your job. And if you're a single person like me who hopes to have a family one day, it's valuable to lock in life insurance now while you're young and healthy. If you wait until you actually have a health condition to try and get life insurance, it can be difficult or maybe even impossible. Now I can hear you saying, Life insurance, all the options, it can be so confusing, I don't have time to figure it out. Well, that's where Policy Genius comes in. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top insurers in just a few clicks to find the best price. Policy Genius uses simple forms where you provide some basic information about yourself and insurance needs and quickly receive quotes from top insurance companies. And if you have any questions, Policy Genius also has award-winning agents standing by to work for you and not for the insurance companies. Since they don't work for the insurance companies, you know you can trust their guidance, but you don't have to take my word for that. Policy Genius has thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 a year for a million dollars in coverage. And there are even options that offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. So if you're a parent, have anyone depending on you or plan to have a family in the future, you owe it to yourself and your loved ones to get life insurance. Your loved ones deserve this financial safety net and you deserve an easier way to get it. So head over to policygenius.com slash maker or check out the link in the description below to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much money you could save. Thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to it. It is concrete day, guys. Talking about concrete. For this one, I'm gonna be spraying on a thin face coat layer, which is gonna give us a super smooth finish. That is just gonna be Fish Tones HP50 Mix, GFRC Ad Pack, and a bit of plasticizer, and of course, water. We're gonna mix all that up, spray it in with a hopper gun. I get a lot of questions about the right consistency for the face coat, and the short answer is it should be mixed till it's a pancake batter-like consistency. As for the specific ratio of ingredients, you kind of get a rough number, but then you just have to keep adding water and plasticizer a little bit at a time until you get that pancake batter consistency because there's so many other variables that will change even in the same room. The temperature, the humidity, how long the mix may have sat on your shelf, and so on. That It's not going to be the same every time. It sounds tricky, but you do get the hang of it eventually. And spraying it is pretty simple. You just wanna spray the corners of the form first and make sure that you're angling the gun at a 45 degree angle so that it kind of pushes the mix back into what you've already sprayed and doesn't have sand particles bouncing directly off of the form. The spray process only takes about a minute and you wanna do it fast, then get in there while it's still wet with a chip brush and you really kinda of just jab the chip brush into the corners to make sure you're bursting any air bubbles that might've been trapped there. Then you lightly brush the rest of the surfaces on the form to make sure that you get a smooth surface right out of the form. Although in this case, I couldn't really brush the epoxy because it was just so smooth that the brush took the concrete right off of it. So I only brushed the melamine part of the form this time. Next step, you wait until the face coat is firmed up to the point where you can take a finger and see a fingerprint in the concrete, but your finger doesn't go through the concrete. When it's here, you're ready to mix up your back coat, which is gonna be the same mix as you use for the face coat, but this time you're gonna add glass fibers to it and maybe a touch less water so that you can hand pack that back coat into the form. And this is the point where you can really start to appreciate the magic of glass fiber reinforced concrete or GFRC because we're only gonna go about five eighths of an inch 
thick. And that's it. That's the thickness of the concrete. It's gonna be plenty strong. This whole shelf, which is pretty big, is only gonna be about 45 pounds. I'll just make a guesstimate, but you'd probably be looking at a 200 pound or more shelf if you were doing this with standard concrete and you, you couldn't hand pack it. It would have to be solid. You'd have to figure out some other way to mount it to the wall. GFRC just makes so many things possible. The secret to making the shelf float also occurs while we're hand packing the back coat. We're gonna be using a French cleat, which I just cut out quickly on my table saw from plywood. And we need something to support that cleat inside the hollow part of the shelf. So once the concrete was packed into all the surfaces of the form, I built up three columns, which are going to hold the French cleat in place inside the shelf. And I used the French cleat itself to just press against the concrete while it was wet and make sure that they'd hold it in the right place. And we'll come back to how we actually attach the French cleat later once we've demolded. Now, when you're hand packing concrete, you have to bring the concrete up and over the edges of the form in order to make sure it's thick enough at the top of the walls. This means you usually have some messy grinding once the concrete is cured. But I do have a trick here in order to avoid the mess. If you come back at about seven or eight hours after the pour, when the concrete has firmed up but is still pretty soft, you can just take a trowel to basically scrape off all the extra concrete and get a nice clean edge. It takes a little bit more work, but the trade-off of not having to deal with an insane amount of dust from grinding concrete it's worth that elbow grease. Next up, the step of removing the melamine form from the cured concrete can sometimes be a bit tricky because there's a vacuum that basically forms between the melamine and concrete. I found these plastic door stops recently that work amazingly well to separate concrete from the melamine without scratching the surface right. of the concrete. Woo, all right, that's looking pretty good. I'm digging this. See that, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Haha, <laughs> that actually came out really cool. I love the variations in color, actually. Yeah, and saw that like floating against a wall like that. It's a shelf. That should be really freaking crazy. Now back to the fringe cleat. We'll be using a combination of Tapcon concrete screws and epoxy to hold it in place. So we start by drilling holes into those columns I built up that will accept the Tapcon screws. Then I mix up four minute epoxy from channel sponsor, Total Boat, and dab some of it inside of those holes and between the columns and the plywood. And that'll give us belts and suspenders so that we know those screws will never come loose and this shelf will be rock solid against the wall. Unintended. Probably should have tested this before. I was just eyeballing it, but. We're kind of running into some issues with this low part here being blocked by the actual shelf itself. So I think we're going to just have to hog out part of the French cleat here with a jigsaw and then hopefully that will, hopefully that'll work. Okay, let's try her now. Okay. Fast forward a couple weeks in the future. You can see there's been a lot of changes around this floating shelf. We got the full green feature wall. We got a homemade 3D printed neon sign. We've started to do a bunch of the renovation work in this entryway to finish it off because it's the last piece of the puzzle to finish off the abandoned building. If you're worried that I didn't show you how all this was done, don't worry because there are videos that are going to be coming out soon for all that. We've had a lot of things going on in parallel. For now, just make sure you sub and bell in order to get notified when those videos go live. As always, it means a ton having you guys here watching the videos. That's it for this time, and I'll see you guys next time.